Well, good morning. Welcome to Bethany. We're so glad you've chosen to be with us on this Country Sunday Picnic Gospel Sunday, all right? It's all of those things. We're having the, the Thurstons with us today, and they're going to be uh, leading us in our worship with a mini concert, and I'm sure that you will enjoy it. Now, I have a few announcements to make. In the bulletin, there is a love offering envelope, and whatever we give in this envelope is going to the Thurston's for ministering to us today. And so we want to encourage you to use that envelope, give you a heads up now so when the offering goes by, you can drop that in the offering. We also have a picnic following the service today. And I know what some of you are thinking, but I didn't bring anything. You didn't need to bring anything. We have everything. We've got hot dogs. We've got fried chicken. We have salad. We've got potato salad. We, and then there's also after that going to be some games and entertainment. So you're going to want to stick around after the service. It's going to be a really fun and wonderful Sunday. I do have a, a more serious announcement to make. Uh, Sally Hallenbeck uh, went to be with the Lord on June 23rd, and there will be a memorial service here at the church on Saturday, July 21st at 1 o'clock. Uh, so if you want to jot that down, July 21st, 1 o'clock here at the church. Uh, the Whispering Woods, is uh, our church is going there following Monday. We're, we're going to be there for the, a Christmas in July. You might remember back at uh, Christmas time, uh, it was blizzardous and it was canceled. So nothing better to do than have Christmas in July. Uh, you can actually go sing Christmas carols in your shorts kind of thing. You know. Next month, we have a very special music uh, presentation. Uh, we're going to be having a, an ensemble of singers from Germany with us. And uh, they've been here before. Our memory verse. We uh, just started this for the month of July. It's actually two verses. And it's one of those really famous, important verses in the Bible. I think everybody should have this one committed to memory and under their belt. So I want you to say it together with me right now. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Now every now and then there's detours in life and the road gets a little crook in it. There's a turn and you need this verse when that happens. Because if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, and you lean not on your own understanding. You just say, God, your will be done, not mine. God will then, he'll straighten that whole thing out for you. And you will find out afterward that he works all things together for good. So we want to begin our service with a prayer. And then we're going to have a, a, a real treat for you this morning with the Thurston family. Father in heaven, we have gathered today here to worship you. Uh, Lord, we know that those who worship you worship in spirit and truth. We pray that this morning our spirits will be lifted through song so that we have a connection with you. Uh, Lord, we pray then as we look at the word, the truth, that it would speak into our hearts and our lives. We're asking, we're invoking your blessing upon the service today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We have the Thurstons, please. All right. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Well, y'all don't waste no time. Here they are. Let's go. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> are you glad to be in God's house today? You look so happy. If y'all are happy, just wave at me like that. That's almost everybody. We need to move the lot up here. I'm telling you, they're happy over here. I tell you what, so exciting standing out there for a few minutes before service. I heard everybody excited talking about being here and all of the food. Not one person said anything about the thirsty. So here we go. <laughs> Yeah. 
most of y'all, but we'll check with that before the day's over. But this is the most requested song we've ever had, and we want to do it for you today. Sorrow and pain, Jesus still is my comfort and guide. And His love covers me, and His grace has set me free. And someday I will stand by His side. Mommy, how about this? How about you trust the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and 
it's only not to you the understanding that God you. I make all things work for good for those who love the Lord. You don't have to understand it. Just wait and see what I do. And then he said, take the pressure off me too. It's never been your witness, man. It's been mine through you. So you wait and see if I'm not faithful and I make all those things that you think are waiting to destroy you bow and serve my name and glorify my name. And uh, when you ask God the question, who's going to want what I have? God started bringing people one after another to me. Some people needing cash. Who's going to want what I have? Take a hundred bucks out of your bank account, Monty, and give it to this guy because his kids are starving. Who's going to want what I have? Take one of those three queen-size mattresses out of your storage unit at the bottom of your house and give it to this kid because he's taking care of his mom and his grandma who's in his fourth stages of old Alzheimer's and they live in the hood and he's sleeping on the floor, Monty. Give him one of those. Who's going to want what I have? Yeah. You might not need to hear the message today. But we are drowning in God's blessing. And you may be facing obstacles where you feel surrounded by the enemy. Take heart. Yeah. God is ever present, ever faithful. He's closer than the very air that you breathe. And you just be patient and watch and see if he doesn't make all that stuff that would seem to destroy you bow and serve his name yeah. and glorify him. It's almost like a uh, preacher, you don't need to give a sermon. Oh no, you're not getting off that easy. <laughs> but before the sermon comes the offering. And there's an envelope like this in the bulletin for you to uh, give a love gift to the Thurston's today. If you really appreciate their ministry, then you can not just clap for them, you can put something inside that envelope, drop the offering plate when it goes by. If you are not fast enough, then you can place it at the plate by the door on the way out of here. But I want to ask God's blessing on the offering. The ushers are going to come while I pray. Come on down. Father in heaven, uh, we are very, very thankful. We've been blessed already. There's been such a message in song. It's reflected the Holy Scriptures. It's ministered to our hearts. The Spirit has borne witness with our spirit that these are words that have come from God. Uh, Lord, bless our offering now that it might accomplish your purpose. Our regular offering for our church, its outreach here and around the world through our missionary the goods, and Lord, also the love gift that we give now to the first sentence. Bless them, O oh Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I thought about this. Did I want to uh, talk really fast through my sermon, or did I want to cut it in half? <laughs> so I cut it in half, and I'm still going to talk really fast. Now it's a two-part series. Yeah. And, and I, I imagine they're going to sell out of the, the album on Amazing Grace. Why not? No. Got two people in the cell. So, can you hear me now? No. no. Then I'll talk really loud. <laughs> so, we've been looking at what's so amazing about grace. And they've got an album about grace, so I figure you're going to be selling out of the one on grace. All right. But what's so amazing about grace? And the answer today to that question is God's family. And I want to jump into this whole theme of God's family. Jesus told us how to become a child of God. There was an old gentleman by the name of Nicodemus. He came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, you know that your teacher come from God? Because nobody can do the miracles you're doing except God be with him. And Jesus responded, not from one direction he anticipated, uh, that Nicodemus had anticipated. He says, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. I think I'm on. And that's what Jesus did. I guess it got louder as he told them. No one, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. And so Nicodemus said, wait a minute, how can a man be born when he is old? Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. And Jesus responded, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water, physically, born of spirit, the spirit of God. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. You seem to be a child of God, you've got to be born again. John the Apostle told us earlier in the book how you do that, little concrete, simple steps. 
Jesus came to his own, that was all, that which was his own, but his own did not receive him, there's key word, receive, to accept, to welcome. Yet to all who received, accepted, welcomed him. And then he tells us how you do that. It says, to those who believe in his name. You believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Wasn't that Peter's confession? Yes. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. That if you believe in your heart, in the Lord Jesus, confess with your mouth, what? You'll be saved. The way you do that is you accept the Lord Jesus. And it says, the children born, not of natural descent, you don't become a Christian because your parents were born. You become a Christian because you believe for yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. He says, not a human decision or a husband's will because you're married to somebody, but by the will of God. You're born of God. You're born of the Spirit of God. Now, I'm going to assume that you've done that. You are a child of God, because that's what you pick up in Galatians. That's what we're studying. What's so amazing about it? Grace. If you've done that, Paul describes what you are as a child of God. But here's what he describes. He says, first of all, you are an heir. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. So you are an heir of righteousness. When you believe, you are declared righteous by God. You're an heir according to the promise that he originally made to Abraham. Secondly, you are an owner. What I am saying is that as long as the heir is a child, there's no difference from the slave, although he owns the whole estate. Amen. i tell you what, I got a home in for There used to be an old gospel song and, uh, about the, the, uh, the home being at the corner of Glory Avenue and Hallelujah Street. Remember that song? And I, I often refer to, I think of my dad who's going on to heaven, that, that he's sitting at the corner of Glory Avenue and Hallelujah Street, uh, and he's sitting with the garage door open, he's in his shorts. <laughs> it's a nice, cool, breeze day, breezy day, and there's my dad. That, that, that's my dad just love to work in the garage, pedal around, and make this. And, and I, I just know that in heaven, he's at the corner of Glory Avenue and Hallelujah Street. Listen, these songs have been, we've been saying and talking a lot about the glory of that going on, being with Christ. Listen, everything that Jesus owns, because I'm a child of God too, I own too. I'm a child of God. I might just be a kid and I'm not calling the shots because I'm not running the estate yet. <laughs> but I am an heir, I am an owner, and so are you. Then he goes out and says, but you were just minor. He says, that's a whole thing. He said, the, the, the child that owns everything is subject to the guardians and trustees until you're at the time set by the parent, okay, by his father, to actually inherit everything. You may own everything, but you're just not in charge. And that's the way it is. I'm not in charge now. The Lord is in charge, but a day is coming. But I'm going to graduate from earth to heaven, and I'm not going to be the minor kid anymore. I'm going to, he's going to put me in charge of things. That's scary for most of you. <laughs> he's going to be in charge. Yeah, I'll be in charge one day. Listen, he goes on and says, this is what you used to be. So also when we were children, you, you see the often the, the, the tutor that was over you, the person who was in charge, the guardian, was a slave in the house. He says, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. There was a time when I didn't know Jesus. I got saved when I was eight years old, too, and I was a hard sinner, too. <laughs> Not as hard as some of the others, but it doesn't take but one sin to constitute you as a sinner. And I was a slave in sin, but then I met Jesus, and everything changed in my life. I didn't know all the changes that were going to take place because he was working in me, not me working on me. He was doing something in my life. He said, when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. I was all about the world and me. That's the way it was. But then he says you were redeemed. I love this verse. He tells us the timing of redemption, but when the time had fully come, Every now and then somebody says, isn't it too bad that Jesus wasn't born in the 21st century? Just think, the word could have spread through Twitter, not Twitter, Twitter, 
They could have been Twitter. It could have been through Facebook. It could have been Instagram, Snapchat, whatever you use. It could have been through the newspaper, on television, cable, or otherwise. Everybody would know, but no, that wasn't the right time. The right time is when Jesus was born. When the right time had fully come. It says, God sent his son. Now listen, this passage says he sent the son. The son already existed before Jesus was born. Because Jesus is God the son who became man. God became one of us. He became man. That's what it says. He was born of a woman. God the son was, was made man. He was born of the virgin Mary. He was born under the law. That's what we studied last time. The law was added to bring us to Christ. It only was a temporary thing until the child, the seed, should come and the child would arrive. And the purpose, the whole purpose of Jesus coming into the world is on the very highlighted words there, to redeem, to purchase, <coughs> to pay, to buy that which was already his own by creation and creators. But when we fell into sin, now he had to buy us back. He had to pay the price of our sin on the cross to purchase us. So I belong to Jesus twice. He made me and he redeemed me. I am a child of God because he paid the price. He said to redeem those who are under the law that they might receive the full rights as sons. Uh, most of the time, most translations translate adoption. That, he might, that we might receive the adoption of sons. The word adoption is literally to place as a son. In the Roman world and in the Greek world, the child had no rights, even though he was a child. He was heir of everything until he was literally called adopted, made full heir of all the rights of a child. And the passage is saying, when I accepted Jesus Christ, I became full heir. Everything that's Jesus is belongs to me. Isn't that powerful? Everything. Jesus was resurrected from the dead, so I have eternal life. Isn't that awesome? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. I got a place waiting for me in heaven. You should go down the line. Everything. Because I am an adopted child of God. I get full rights to everything. And he says, because you are sons, God sent his son into our hearts. Christ dwells in our hearts by faith, according to the third chapter of the book of Ephesians. He dwells in our hearts. When I was an eight-year-old boy and I accepted Jesus as my Savior, I prayed these words, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And he did. So it makes your child of God. And it says that spirit is the one that puts it in our hearts to cry out, Abba Father, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. So at this point, the Apostle Paul summarizes the message. I'm going to let his summary be my summary. Okay? Basically, just going to read this. So you are no longer a slave, but you're a son. You're a child of God. And since you are a son or a child of God, God has made you an heir. You get to inherit everything. Now listen. This is what you were. Formerly, when you did not know God, there was that time when you didn't know God. He said, you were a slave to those who are by nature no gods. Uh, you, you were a slave to money. You were a slave to work. You were a slave to popularity. You were a slave to friends. You were a slave to a lot of things in the world, the basic elementary things in the world. He said, formerly, that's what you were. But you are not. Now that you know God, they said, wait a minute, i got to straighten this out. No, no, or rather, God knows you. You are known by God. God knows you. God knows you. So he says to the Galatians, how is it that you're turning back to those weak, miserable principles? Why are you trying to keep the law? You don't have to keep the law. You were saved by grace. You live by grace. You were saved through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You live through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you wish to be enslaved all over again, he says. You are, you are you're observing special days, months and seasons. You're, you're trying to perform all these different rituals and all that's going on with the law. He said, why are you doing that? He says, I fear for you. 
For somehow I've wasted my efforts on you. You just don't get it. You are saved by the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. I plead with you, brothers. Become like me. What's he saying? I gave up on trying to earn my salvation by keeping the laws of Jew. I became like you, the Gentile who has no rules or regulations. And that says, I'm not keeping all the rules and regulations. What? No, he says, I am believing in Jesus. I got saved by Jesus, by my faith in Jesus, and now I live my life in faith in Jesus. And I do by faith what they could not do by keeping the law. I receive the gift of eternal life, and, and I have the love of God in my heart, so that I do, I do the things that are in the law without trying to do them, because Christ is the law in me. And when I love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, and I love the neighbor as myself, I will naturally just fulfill all the rules without having any rules to fulfill. That's living by faith. Living by faith. Anybody says, you've done me no wrong. You've done me no wrong. Here. This whole passage is saying, these are our benefits of being a child of God. And you can be a child of God too. You just receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you love Him with all your heart. Let's pray. Father in heaven, this is the gospel. That the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And they're born not of the will of man, but they're born of God. Even as Jesus said, we have to be born again. Perhaps if someone here today, Lord, has never experienced that new birth, I pray right now, Lord, that they will ask you to come into their heart as I did as a little boy. And that you will invade them. You will invade them with your forgiveness, with righteousness and holiness. You will invade them, Lord, with eternal life. That they will know that today is the day of their salvation. That they have been born again. Right now, if they just say, Lord, save me, you will hear and answer that prayer. Bless in that way we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The verses are going to lead us to one final thought. Final thoughts. What's so amazing about grace? God's family. We're heirs. Uh, not only are we heirs, but we're also owners of all things because we're redeemed by the Son of God. That's just my mind. God, God loves us so much. All right. And so I want to ask God's blessing on the food that we're going to partake of in a few moments. Want me to stick around? Uh, don't forget to visit their table. And of course, we'll be by the door. Should you have not gotten your envelope then, get that, and then we'll make sure that they get to the thirsty. Let's pray. Father, we're so very blessed this Lord's Day. We're thankful, Lord, for the ministry and song and also in your word. We pray, Father, now that you'll bless us in our fellowship together. Uh, bless the food to us, may be nourishment for our bodies. Lord, that we might serve you as children of God, that people might see us as children of God and, and be provoked and ask the reason of hope that's within us, that we might tell them it's all about our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has saved us because he loved us and made us a part of the family of God and radically changed us. That we are heirs, we are owners, we are redeemed, we are blessed by God. Thank you, Lord, for this Lord's day. Now bless the Lord what we do in it, for your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful Lord's day. Stick around for our country picnic. Mike. Then, then I'll keep it a secret about that.